Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover how and when trainees can use the pre-fatigue strategy to maximize muscle growth. Before getting to the details about pre-fatigue, let's first cover what the goal of hypertrophy training is. Often we intuitively assume that the goal of hypertrophy training is to lift more weight over time, which will linearly correlate with muscle growth. In other words, if we improve performance over time, this means we are growing muscle. However, this is only partially true. Yes, we do want to see some improvements in lifting performance over time, although this is not really the goal of hypertrophy training. Rather, performance improvements should more so be seen as a result of effective hypertrophy training, not the other way around. The actual goal for hypertrophy training is to maximally stress the muscle we are trying to train. It is this stress that results in muscular adaptation, and improvements in performance should naturally occur as a result of muscle growth over time. Therefore, we shouldn't necessarily be chasing strength gains if our goal is to maximize muscle growth, we should instead try to find the best way to maximally stress the target muscle. This is an important concept for the topic of pre-fatigue, so make sure you keep this in mind for the remainder of the video. Let's now explore what the pre-fatigue strategy is all about. There are probably a few different definitions about what exactly pre-fatigue is, and maybe some disagreement between parties. However, the general mechanisms by how pre-fatigue works are all essentially the same. So for this video, we will define pre-fatigue training as the intentional effort to fatigue a muscle before performing another exercise which that muscle is a prime mover for. This is usually achieved by using an isolation lift prior to a compound lift for a muscle that is heavily involved in each exercise. Now this may sound slightly confusing, so let's explore some examples to demonstrate this more clearly. A common example is the use of leg extensions prior to a compound squat variation. In this example, the leg extension will fatigue the quads, so that when the trainee performs the squat, the quads are already fatigued for the lift. Another example would be to perform chest flies before a compound press like a barbell bench press. In this example, the flies will fatigue the pecs, so that when the trainee performs the bench press, the pecs are already fatigued for that lift. So now that we understand what pre-fatigue is, let's cover what effects this has on hypertrophy training. The main effect pre-fatiguing a muscle has is on lifting performance. Intuitively, pre-fatiguing a muscle will reduce performance of subsequent sets using that muscle. So basically, trainees will have to use lighter loads or perform fewer repetitions during the working sets of the following exercise, compared with if they were to train with the traditional protocol. It is often claimed that pre-fatiguing a muscle will increase its activation in subsequent sets. This may be of benefit for those who want to maximize stress of a single specific muscle group during a compound exercise, if they struggle to activate it. However, does this phenomenon actually have any truth behind it? Or does pre-fatiguing a muscle actually inhibit muscle activation due to fatigue? This study explored the effects of pre-fatiguing the pecs before bench press training. Subjects in this study performed a near 1RM bench press before and after performing chest flies. It was found that pec major muscle activation was no different when performed in a fresh state compared with a pre-fatigued state. This study suggests that when maximum effort is exerted, muscle activation will be maximal even when the muscle is fatigued. So this study shows us that pre-fatiguing a muscle probably doesn't change how active it is during a subsequent compound movement. However, it also wasn't any lower compared with training in a fresh state either. This suggests that as long as we are training with a high effort level, which can be achieved by either lifting near maximal loads or taking sub-maximal loads close to failure, then muscle activity isn't really influenced by a pre-fatigue strategy. All of the information we've discussed so far are indirect influences of hypertrophy. While the research on muscle activation is helpful, it is not a direct measure of muscle growth. So what we really want to know is how does pre-fatigue influence actual hypertrophy outcomes? Luckily, we have some research directly assessing this topic. This study explored the effects of pre-exhaustion training on quadriceps hypertrophy. Trainees in this study performed three sets of leg press at 75% 1RM. One group trained in a traditional straight set protocol, while the other group performed the same training protocol, although it was preceded by one set of leg extensions with 20% 1RM to failure. As expected, the pre-exhaust group performed significantly less volume load, meaning sets times reps times load, since the quads were already fatigued before the leg press. However, as we can see, 
Changes in quad hypertrophy were not really any different at various regions between the groups. This study suggests that a pre-exhaust strategy results in a reduction in lifting performance without compromising hypertrophy adaptations. So it seems that a pre-fatigue strategy is not inherently more or less hypertrophic compared with a traditional training protocol. So why would lifters even consider implementing this type of training into their program? Well, a pre-fatigue strategy allows trainees to get an equally effective hypertrophy stimulus without lifting as much load or performing as many reps per set. While this is probably not a great strategy to maximize strength, it can be useful for hypertrophy training in certain contexts. There are two primary reasons that a pre-fatigue strategy may be implemented. The first is for injury management. This can be for lifters who are managing current injuries, past injuries, or those who find certain lifts particularly stressful on specific joints. Generally, heavier loads are going to be more stressful on the joints and connective tissue, which may exacerbate current or past injury. Generally, there will be a threshold of how heavy you can train before the injury begins to flare up or elicit a pain response. However, it can be difficult to achieve a good hypertrophy stimulus without loading some exercises relatively heavy. This is where pre-fatigue may come in handy. We can pre-fatigue a prime mover of a compound lift to lift with lighter loads and still achieve an equally effective hypertrophy stimulus. Until the trainee is able to lift pain-free, a pre-fatigue strategy can be used in the meantime to continue training and making gains. For example, let's say a lifter has some sort of shoulder injury and can't bench press very heavy without pain or discomfort. In this case, they can perform one to two sets of chest flies before their working sets on bench press. This will allow them to still train close to failure with a moderate rep range while using lighter loads than they otherwise would. And the other reason to implement a pre-fatigue strategy is to accumulate more total weekly volume. Even if a trainee is not managing an injury, a pre-fatigue strategy can help lifters perform more volume with less overall joint stress and systemic fatigue. Trainees may be limited in how much volume they can tolerate before their joints develop some kind of pain or irritation. For example, a trainee may want to perform multiple sets of squats, but their lower back can only tolerate a few sets throughout the week with a relatively heavy load. If the trainee wanted to increase the number of sets performed for the back squat, they may implement a pre-fatigue strategy. As we have discussed, this will allow us to train with lighter loads while still being equally as hypertrophic. This way the trainee can perform more volume with less stress on their lower back and still get an effective training stimulus for the legs. So let's summarize how the pre-fatigue strategy may be implemented into a hypertrophy training protocol. First, we need to understand that muscle stress is most important for hypertrophy adaptations, not necessarily the load that we lift. Pre-fatiguing a muscle before a compound lift will reduce the load lifted or reps performed in subsequent sets. Despite these reductions in lifting performance, this doesn't seem to influence muscle activation or direct hypertrophy outcomes, provided that we are still training with a high effort level. In other words, we are taking each set fairly close to failure. This has two potential uses in a hypertrophy training program. First is for those who are managing a current or past injury. These lifters may use a pre-fatigue approach to limit loads lifted and limit joint stress on the injured region. And second is to help accumulate more volume while minimizing injury risk. Ultimately, the pre-fatigue strategy doesn't have any direct benefits over traditional training, nor is it inferior. Lifters can use this information to determine if this strategy may be useful in their specific context. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.